Greetings, urban farmers, gardeners, and healthy food visionaries. Farmer Greg here, and welcome to the 526th episode of the Urban Farm Podcast, where every day we work together to educate and inspire you to become part of your food revolution. Have you thought about why you do what you do? This is a daily process for me, and it is the reason I put so much energy and money into producing our Urban Farm Podcast. What you may not know is that it costs $158 per episode to get you this incredible information. And as you can hear, we don't do sponsorships as we want to keep our message as clean as possible. It has always been my intent to pay for our podcast production with our online content sales, and that hasn't worked very well. So we're trying something new, and I need your help so that we can continue delivering this great content. And quite honestly, this is an easy learning field request. I've teamed up with some amazing gardening visionaries to host a free online edible backyard summit the week of March 23rd. When you attend, you'll get free access for the week to the knowledge of these food growing experts and have an opportunity to get your burning questions answered live. Plus, we're going to release five modules of our comprehensive Growing Food the Basics course so that you can dig deeply into the fundamental concepts that will set you up for success no matter where you're at in your food growing journey. So here's what I need. The most helpful thing you can do is to share our EdibleBackyardSummit.com page far and wide with your friends, on social media, in your garden clubs, and probably places we've never even thought about. Next, please attend the free Edible Backyard Summit. My hope is that some of you will dive in, support our work, and purchase the extended summit and learn more about gardening and creating your own edible backyard. Our intent with this Edible Backyard Summit is for you to discover how you can truly thrive with a healthy life and get reconnected with your food while learning how to live a more self-reliant life. Feeling secure knowing that you have a food supply right in your backyard. When you attend the Edible Backyard Summit, you'll be part of a community of people from around the world that are all on a mission to make their backyards and patios into an edible paradise. Whether you're starting your first garden or maintaining an existing one, you will come out of this summit feeling revitalized and re-inspired to make growing and eating food the celebration it should be. Sign up for free by going to ediblebackyardsummit.com or texting BACKYARD to 33444. I look forward to seeing you there. Today on our podcast, we have someone who can move mountains by changing one mind and one attitude at a time. We're talking with returning guest Darren Chapman about inner city urban farming. Darren is a community pro activist who has committed his life to helping people. He is founder and CEO of Tiger Mountain Foundation, which has implemented empowerment initiatives to uplift communities and eliminate blight. Tiger Mountain's initiative include community gardens, edible landscape development, audio, visual, and performance art, plus community service and volunteerism. The gardens promote healthy living and active lifestyles by feeding, engaging, and enfranchising the community. Tiger Mountain's asset-based community development model was developed with the thought that everyone can and should be connected and feel part of society. The end game strategy is urban renewal and community restoration via participants who are encouraged to stay engaged and motivated to keep positive and develop their individual very important assets. Darren's motto is to change one mind and attitude at a time, encouraging all who have been touched by it to pay it forward, which will undoubtedly make the immediate and surrounding community and world a better place to live. He is from South Central Los Angeles and grew up in LA and Phoenix. He currently resides and works in South Phoenix and the Phoenix metropolitan area. Darren, we got to meet you in podcast episode 108. That was over 400 episodes ago. Welcome back to the show. Are you ready to rock? Man, I'm ready to rock, Greg. Excellent. And it's so great to have you back. Can you bring us up to speed on what's been happening in the past four years? My goodness, man. Four years. First off, uh, it's amazing how much and how fast time flies. I know. Uh, four, yeah, yeah. Four, four years ago, uh, I, I was surely appreciative of you having me on your podcast. And it, it's definitely, someone told me uh, any day above ground is actually a pretty dang good day. <laughs> right? uh, so, so, here, so, so here I am, 
four years later, still above ground in a, in a very tough environment. You know, in that four years, some of the types of things that we might see at a Tiger Mountain Foundation. On the downside, and, and, and actually the reason why we do the work is, is mostly because of that disparity and, and disengagement and disconnectedness and some of the unevenness that even happens in our own community. So in that four years, we've actually seen the team, the, the nucleus of Tiger Mountain Foundation, grow from an administrative capacity. That actually has been a positive thing in one sense. So we have better record keeping and data tracking and that type of thing. So we're very pleased with that. However, it is admin capacity bill. So uh, you're working with the community and, and a population on the majority that typically doesn't promote and perpetuate this very successful business model that's a triple-double bottom-line juggernaut that can just actually push you from the next five years through the next 10, 15 years. So, so we don't get that type of projection. That admin capacity bill has been very hard to maintain because you are still working with the majority of folks who have been somewhat disengaged and disconnected from, from the majority of, of how successful business might work, what, whether it's a behavioral, environmental issue. There's a lot of different types of issues that occur, and, and Lord knows, Greg, I don't sugarcoat these types of things. However, uh, we can dive into some of those issues a little bit later down the line, but there's just so many different issues that we deal with with folks who might knock on our door and become a incubator farmer, community gardener, participant at Tiger Mountain Foundation. But it's been, for the most part, it's been a, a real strong four years. It's been mm-hmm. a growing period for Tiger Mountain. So we're, we've been appreciative of all of the, the real tough learning lessons and definitely uh, feel like uh, we're in a better place as a result of learning mm-hmm. those lessons. Nice. And you have a beautiful property in South Phoenix, uh, that we recently, you recently had an, an event at where you fed the community and you shared everything you were up to. Tell us about that property and what you do there. Yes, we have uh, the 1.5 acre garden of tomorrow. And that 1.5 acre uh, currently, uh, th- this is going to change here over the next year and or two. But currently, it's part of the nucleus of not only community gardening uh, here in South Phoenix, but we feel community gardening uh, literally across the country. That, that project was started in 2008 as you know, community gardens, typically they might pop up and, you know, over a year or two, if they're lucky, maybe three, try to move in the right direction. However, we had incredible community buy-in. And as a result, that, that project is still very vibrant. Literally, every bed in that garden has something growing from mustard, turnip, collard greens, cilantro, onions, different types of peppers and other staples of the mostly uh, Latin and brown, uh, excuse me, most, most of the uh, uh, brown, Latin and uh, black community, along with others. Uh, South Phoenix has become uh, increasingly diverse. And so we actually get a big smattering of folks from all over our, our cultural universe. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so so that's what that property is all about. It's It's a welcoming beacon to the local community to say, hey, listen, we can take a vacant lot, turn that vacant lot into something that will empower our community. It will give a hand up to uh, folks who are looking to better themselves from within. And we will do that with all folks from from all socioeconomic levels, all uh, uh, diverse culture. Nice. And so you interact with a lot of different people that walk through the gate. Tell me some of their stories. Wow. Jeez. Uh, so so we had, and we're so proud of some of the most recent stories that have come in. A uh, 16-year-old who was actually with Tiger Mountain when he was 11 years old, and he's been kind of knocking on our door on and off over the last uh, four or five years. However, he had fallen into hard times, uh, moved into several different homes recently, j- just as things might go with some of our youth, some of the different issues that they might deal with. The, the, he had some some other issues where he stepped away from school 
So here he was out of school, uh, shuffling from home to home and jobless. And, and so he knocked on our door here recently, and we were able to get him back in school uh, as, a, as a contingency of actually working at the <laughs> farmer's markets nice. with Tiger Mountain Foundation. Yeah, so, you know, and that, that's important to note, too, is that we're not apologists for some of the issues that we have in our community. We still want to set a bar for folks to actually improve their lives. And of course, uh, Greg, you know that in setting that bar, it, it just can't be, okay, here it is for you on a silver platter, eat up. Right. It, it, it has to be some type of work ethic that's involved, some type of other responsibility and or sacrifice even that, that needs to be involved with um, obtaining your next level of transition and or transformation. But that 16-year-old is doing really well. We're super proud of him. We, we had another gentleman uh, who was in an um, officer-involved shooting. He was actually considered to be the aggressor, even though he did not have a weapon. And, and I saw the video, and I thought, man, if that dude would have walked towards me, man, in that manner, I think I probably would have hit him in his jaw. Mm. And yeah, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I mean, you know, he was menacing enough that you might have had to put him in his place. However, to shoot him repeatedly, it was pretty definitive. However, th this is another gentleman that just knocked on our door. And obviously, he's very angry at society. And, and, and they incarcerated him. So not only did they shoot him and he did not die, uh, once they uh, healed him up, sold him up, they, they threw him in prison for, uh, yeah, going after a uh, law law enforcement officer. And, and you know, this, this is sensitive. I mean, this, yeah. this, is, this is not something that typically you would see in a gardening, farming atmosphere uh, that you would address from a personal perspective. You may see it in any type of work environment and, and you know, say, wow, that, that happened to you. That That's really horrible. However, we take it intrinsically and try to work on how we can get that person to grow. If we get if we grow all the produce in the world and we get that one person to grow, then then we're doing what we set out to do. This this was our mission is to actually grow the people who are growing the the more nutritious uh, food in the better environment. So uh, that that gentleman once again, I uh, was super proud of him. He's doing well. Uh, we're getting other calls from other folks saying, "Hey man, we case manage that guy." What's going on with him? He seems to be all chipper and you know and happy. Where yeah, and and, uh, and that's what we want, man. This this guy should be. I mean, if you met this dude, Greg, which I know you, you would be saying you 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 would never even know that he had this type of darkness as part of his past because he's doing so well. He's on on the road to not recidivating and going back into that jail system, and he's valuing himself as a as a man because these types of opportunities at a Tiger Mountain Foundation lead to, you know, other potential opportunities with an urban farm. And now we become part of a rigor and, and education around, you know, growing our environment. I mean, it's, it's, it's so interrelated. It's, it's, man, as you put that tree in the ground and that tree brings that oxygen into the air and, and you now become uh, more appreciative of not surviving the gang and, and not surviving some of the hard knocks that we have in our in our urban uh, environment. But but how you make that urban environment, man, interrelated from the neighborhood that you grew up in, uh, which typically would not even be in these types of conversations, to across Arizona, to across the United States, to across the world. And and so he feels good because he's, he, he knows that he's a leader and he's part of that message. And he, he's He's always been obviously a very smart person, and and so now to actually have an opportunity to be engaged with his his whole world is is done wonders for him. That's the thing: people that do things that our culture thinks is bad, they aren't necessarily 
dumb. I don't want to use that. I hesitate mm-hmm. to use that word. They're, they're, they can be really smart people. They've just taken a wrong step. And what you do, and I've seen it for years with you, what you do is you reach in and you give them a hand up and inspire them to be great. Well, I, I surely appreciate that. And I'm sorry, Greg, dumb might be an appropriate. There, there was that movie Dumb and Dumber, right. uh, w- which I really enjoyed with Jim Carrey. Yep. It was hilarious. However, I think that in the context of what I've done in my neighborhoods and and what I've done in life, uh, it actually could be construed as dumb and probably even I I actually thwarted my dumbest effort and did something even dumber than that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, amazingly. So, yeah, as an an imperfect human being, and and we all are, you know, uh, bless our souls, as, as imperfect human beings, I at least for me, recognize that this is the exact place where I've always wanted to be in my life is to be able to take some of the things that were my own personal issues and and try to hone them so that I could, if I had one more day left in this life, Greg, that, that day would be probably a really good day because I'm a little bit better than I was yesterday, just mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. And, and and then cumulatively, we're, we're doing that over a week and we're doing that over a month and we're doing that. Uh, like I said, that one kid was 11 and now he's 16. We have another 11 year old who is uh, private first class. Now he's in the uh, Army Aviation Department at maybe two or three ranks above that private first class. And um, wow. You know, seeing these kids, yeah, go go to the University of Arizona and leave the state and go to other universities, and and you know, these are the same kids that typically their their life expectancy in our communities have been, you know, diminished unfortunately mm-hmm. because of all of the other issues that could be part of doing and being a part of, you know, doing some dumb things, Greg, and and actually even sometimes being part of a sometimes even broken system that could be construed, at least from my mind's eye, as, man, that that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we've seen the epitome of dumb in our world, and it actually, you know, just keeping it real, it, it actually is something that is an obstacle for folks. And if you're already got two strikes against you, you already mm. have, you know, every liquor store, every smoke shop, you already have some of these other things that have been permitted to happen in your community. People didn't see it coming. That What I love to say is that that oncoming light uh, wasn't light at the end of the tunnel. It, it, it was an oncoming train. And, and as oh, a result, wow. uh, yeah, yeah. And as a result, as a result, we are looking at folks who didn't see that train coming. They, they already were born with that strike one, if not even strike two. Mm-hmm. And they're born into a billion dollar, billion dollar, multi-billion dollar prison pipeline. They're born into a multi-billion dollar big pharmaceutical pipeline. Mm-hmm. They're born into all of this type of obstacle, per se, all of this type of for sure hurdle. And so, you know, we this is the, this is the, the community that we decided to put our first urban garden in. And, and so we have to, as we've progressed, we've had to intentionally address some of that disparity and, and some of that hurdle. My big question for you is Mm -hmm. what's the, what's your motivation behind this? Why, why are you doing this? Wow. My my biggest motivation is there's a saying, and and I believe the, the great urban laureate Snoop Dogg actually perpetuated this saying, he is I and I am him. And then he kind of put it a little bit differently. He said, Slim with the tilted brim, what's my name? I'll keep it PG-13 for the podcast. But but Snoop Dogg most eloquently put it, he is I and I am him. That is what I am as that is what I am ex- experiencing. I I am literally that gentleman that uh, was 16 years old 
uh, thinking that, you know, maybe the world is my oyster, not knowing that uh, as I was walking through this beautiful tunnel of life and, you know, looking at that, that, that incredible ray of light at the end of that tunnel that would, you know, jettison me into the professional football world or hitting home runs in, in a major league park that, that, you know, as I got towards that light, that it, it actually was, you know, that, that locomotive speeding mm-hmm. very quickly in my direction. So so I had a choice. I, I either needed to jump out of the way, uh, run back up that tunnel and, and regress tremendously, or, you know, somehow, man, try to take that locomotive on and, and maybe change it back into opportunity that could be something that's very bountiful at the end of that tunnel. And and so that's why I do the work. Um, I, I came from a family that, you know, suffered quite a bit of heartache based on all of the issue and, and disparity uh, that, that went on with, you know, our lives as uh, young folks growing up in the community. And so that has been biggest reason is just me kind of being behind bars before, um, you know, being arrested in, in my community. And some of this stuff was self-inflicted. Some of this stuff it was societal, you know, driving down that same street uh, while working in the areas that I'm working in and, and being pulled over. And, you know, what are you doing in this neighborhood? Well, gosh, this is where I, I grew up. This is where I now work. This is actually where I now play. So, so am I getting pulled over? Am I, am I warm yet? You know, we got this thing called DWB. You know, we really want to make sure that, you know, and that's called driving while black, DWB. That you got a DWI, you got a DW, you got a DUI. Yeah, to, to, to be pulled over while uh, DWB is, is sometimes a rough one. Wow. And, but, but, it's the, but it's the reason why. I mean, what, what if you and I, Greg, just because we actually get together in conversations like this, make a subtle change in the world and how people view Darren or how people from my community view Greg. So Greg, I, you have always been a source uh, for people who wanted to do some really good urban farming, really good urban gardening, plant trees in their community. And, and instead of trying to be that one size fits all at Tiger Mountain Foundation, I can now refer some of those people to you, which I have on many occasions. Mm-hmm. And and they have come back to me and said, hey, man, that Greg was like super helpful. Not not that white guy was super helpful, not that other guy or, or you know, that, that Catholic or that Muslim or what happened. Man, that that Greg, because that's how I introduced you. And so th- it, these are the subtle things that at least I can do on my end to try to change my world, because my, my world has been a world of of quite a bit of uh, dysfunctionality, has been a world of quite a bit of we didn't see it coming. So you could maybe call it naiveness, you know, or naive it. Uh, we we can you know there there's been so many different things Greg that I've actually stepped through that have shaped my reasoning for wanting to do this type of work but but like I said the biggest uh, reason is is he he is I and and I am him and 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 that goes for that 16 year old kid that that goes for that kid who was very or that that man who was working with us now who was very angry about a lot of things that he viewed as uh, not okay and unfair about society that that goes for that gentleman and and it goes for uh, the gentleman that I'm talking to on the phone right now you know he he and you and I are, are very good friends however you know we 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 talked some about some of the very tough things that yeah. you know sometimes needs to be addressed in life and and so but that's okay because you and I have come out on the other side mm-hmm. of the conversations and said hey man you know what I got to tell you though ultimately Greg I respect you I appreciate you man and and even if I beg to differ once or twice out of maybe 300 times I think the odds are in our favor Aver, man to actually absolutely. be okay together yeah exactly yeah. well and we had a yeah. we had an incident happened i'll just go straight to it you and i were working on a project and i Mm. stepped out uh over on glendale west uh glendale avenue it was an edible landscaping project and i was working Mm. with your crew remember and i i had some conversations with your crew that i should have cleared through you first 
Well, you know, and, and, and maybe that's just Darren learning as well. So so there's and, a, and um, I'm gonna say and Greg learning as well here too. And yeah, yeah. So we, mm-hmm. we did a really good job of navigating through that. You Didn't know, we? Yeah. Oh, uh, man, congratulations to us, Greg. Exactly. I mean, congratulations man. to us. I mean, because we, we could have looked at that like who in the heck does he think he is? Right. And I, I, I looked at it like, okay, if if I could have come to you in a particular different type of way, what would that have looked like? Yep. That 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 was that was something that I addressed personally. Because right. I, you've got to I, I and that once again, that that leads me to where I am in, in my walk and in my my journey and why I do this work is I, I actually find myself even honing once again. I, I love using that word, yeah. uh, you know, because you're you're kind of it's it's like pruning. You you prune for a reason. You mm-hmm. don't just prune for the sake of pruning. You you want an end game outcome, and, and that's more vitality to the plant. You want that plant to be a better producer, and so therefore you prune with that intent in mind. So <laughs> nice. I, I've, yeah, I've, I've literally taken events and, and, and happenstance in my life like this to to shape myself, but also to use it as a mentor. Some of these young men and uh, women that are part of our conversation. And so now I've become, I feel, a, a much better mentor, a much better educator in my community, much better brother to my brother. Thank mm-hmm. you, Greg. Yeah, right back and, at you, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and and here we go, man. J- just walk through that tunnel again, and on the other side, man, is uh, something that's quite utopian, and it's not a locomotive, you know, chasing my right. ultimate demise. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Man, I love yeah. your metaphors. You do such a great job oh, with that. Man. And oh, I man. do love working with you. So your yeah, that, work... that little that that little that little duck on the treadmill, man, on that one brain cell, man, is actually very active. I always <laughs> tell people that. Nice. Your organization, Tiger Mountain Foundation, you also install edible landscaping for mm-hmm. homeowners and for businesses. Tell me about that. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's something that we wanted to put in place as a sustainability model. And it's it's been a model for the duration. Over the next year and or two, we'd like to shape that model into a bona fide sustainability viable solution for how Tiger Mountain Foundation stays relevant and, and is continuously bringing in different folks from the you know the communities that we serve. I mean, we have college students that come in, transition at a Tiger Mountain Foundation, and, and quite frankly, you and I had that conversation around some of those college students, and, and it's up to us, Greg, to kind of, once again, help those kids get yeah. to another level right. of uh, understanding and, and, and being able to forward themselves in life. And and so yeah, we we have that on we still have that on the job development landscaping, we call it agri landscaping, that, that does the work. However, uh right at this moment we're we're doing it mostly to continue the conceptual message. At at a point here as we move forward and we're here in this conversation, we just completed the business plan. We feel very happy about it. We're going to be doing some work here in the opportunity zones coming up. And we feel great about that now conceptual because we'll be able to build a better admin capacity around it to build it into once again, a very viable concept moving forward that brings in the workforce economic development uh, of the communities that we serve. Nice. And I, you know, I just, I love your passion for moving forward and, and doing Epic in the world. You are truly one of those people that I know that, you know, you're all about Epic. We've definitely moved to a whole new level of how we can be okay at Tiger Mountain Foundation for the next 10, 15, 20 years. So at the tender age now, 54 years old, uh, this upcoming April will be the 14th year of Tiger Mountain Foundation. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. So, yeah. Thank you, Greg. I mean, uh, and congratulations to you again. Once again, like I said, uh, I've, I've had some really good folks who have supported me, who have stood by me, who have dealt with my own imperfection and my own needing to learn different ways of, of dealing with everything under the sun. And so 
if if I didn't have those people in my corner, uh, I I know this would just be such an uphill struggle. Right. So yeah. So so I appreciate yourself, uh, the urban farm folks. Uh, you guys have been there for me. Uh, most recently, the great seed out, I believe it was called. Oh, uh, uh, the great. Am- some, yep. It, was that was that what it was called? The great, great American a- seed out. Yep, that's the one. The great American seed up. It was great. Great seed American either. seed out. Just just so just for your audience, man. The urban farm, along with I believe it was the Rocky Mountain Seed folks and yep. some other, yep, yep, some other different people came and you know money was no good with you. Uh, we're <laughs> in the nonprofit organization and 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 just so you have an idea of how that exponential win happened, you gave us seed, literally donated seed to Tiger Mountain Foundation, which we actually turned right around put into the ground and that seed is very bountiful and now those dollars that that produce is going to the farmer's market those dollars are coming back into some of the youth adults and seniors that have worked currently and we have over 45 youth adults and seniors that receive a financial incentive from those very same seed nice yeah, so so those seeds are truly the seeds of change, and, and we appreciate the folks that have been around us. Uh, uh, I always tell people, Greg, that I am most definitely, because people ask me, hey, you're the CEO and founder, and they put that out there, man, and I, I, I joke that, yeah, I, I, I'm the CEO and founder because uh, the, the title King of England was taken already. <laughs> so, 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 so that's the title. Yeah, I, I just wanted to be you know, kind of, I want that title to not be as lofty. I really understand that my skill set lends itself to being a very fine spoke in the wheel. And and so I, I that's personally how I look at myself and and, and others. You know, I, I really see others as being my, my peer, my equal. You know, I don't see them definitely being any lower than that. And I don't care what walk of life they come from. And, and I definitely don't see them being any higher than that. And I don't care what their title is. So, so just trying to be as even-handed that way has um, allowed me to kind of see the very good that everyone else around me uh, brings to this conversation. So, Well, and I, I think a big piece, and I want to call you out on this one a little bit. Yeah, you are the sure. CEO and founder, but it simply happened because you said so. You know, 14, 15, 16 years ago, you said, listen, we need this in our community. And it happened because you said so. So I just want to give you a virtual high five uh, about that and and shout out to everybody listening. Things happen in the world because somebody says so. And so I challenge you, I challenge you to go out there and do epic Mm. and create something. I remember that. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I, and, 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 you know, I, um, if, if you tune into the podcast over four or five years ago, uh, that, that was one of the sayings that I went to, uh, gosh, it's been that long. I went to, uh, one of your presentations and you ended that presentation with, yeah, see, not see if you can plant the most seeds, not see if you can plant the most and, and, and gain the most dollars from planting the most produce. You ended that event with this, I'm, I'm going to dare to be epic, and I'm going to challenge you folks out here in the audience to dare to be epic. Whatever your ambition is, whatever your avenue, whatever your drive might be, dare to be epic. And, and I love that. That is exactly exactly what I'm talking about. And and so um that that's the the part where you say um you said it will be so you you wanted this to happen yeah. you saw the need for it. But but those types of not not just saying. I mean, I'm 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 looking at you do that presentation. I'm looking at where your podcast has gone from, you know, one level to the next level and you've literally dared to be epic and, and I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll call this, we'll call this our mutual appreciation society. Oh yeah. Most definitely. <laughs> most, and, it, and it's been that way. It's been that yeah. way for a while because that presentation was way before my podcast with you over four years ago. So we're talking, you know, uh, maybe seven, eight, nine years wow. of, of kind of interacting with yeah. one another. I've, I've, I've seen your students from the university come down into the gardens and oh, work yes. with me in the community. Yeah, I mean, there's been so many different types of interaction that I've had with you. So Awesome, awesome. I'm going to shift on you. And I, as a returning guest, I'd like for you to share a childhood memory associated with food. Uh, I 
grew up in an area of Los Angeles that is now called True Town. And they call it True Town because my grandmother is a descendant. She's actually the 25th uh, kid of breeder slave that was given the name Henry Watson. 100% full blood Cherokee. My my grandfather was a uh, Negro League baseball player and uh, when they they moved from Texas as part of that whole, you know, trail of tears into Oklahoma, into Texas, Texas, even some folks uh, believing that they could come to the new Los Angeles, California. And and so those guys came with the clothes on their back and, and a few other items and seed because one thing that they knew mm. is planting. Mm-hmm. They knew agriculture. Yeah. And, and so in my grandparents' backyard, were, were avocado trees, plum trees, all different types of really beautiful things going on. And I just loved it. I mean, I, I loved it. it. It was utopia for me. And and so my, my greatest food story is kind of interesting. As I was growing up, there, I, my Uncle Jim would, would have these barbecues. And, and I don't know if you remember Schlitz Malt Liquor Beer. Oh, I do. <laughs> They, 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 yeah, look out for the bull, man. Yep. And, and so Uncle Jim would pound those slit small liquor beers, and we would sit in that backyard, man, and in anticipation of some of the best, man, falling off the meat, mouth-watering barbecue you ever had in your life. And never once in my life, ever once in my life, uh, and, and, you know, we, 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 we'd anticipate, and Uncle Jim would tell us stories, man, and we'd be in this beautiful, utopic garden. And, and never once in my life, man, did I ever think to myself as being a poor man, even though socioeconomically I grew up in that very low-income community. Wow. Never once in my life. Yeah. yeah. And, and so my best food experience was being in that backyard, being able to literally reach and grab a plum or grab a peach or grab an avocado, the mustard turnips and collard greens that I ate for dinner, and Uncle Jim's mouth-watering barbecue as well. <laughs> you know, we, we nice. always tell our kids that, you know, we, we, we try to keep it, you know, we don't want to be a hypocrite, man. I, I let these kids know that, you know, the beauty of what I do in the world is incredible because it, it involves our lust for life, our, our lust for like being healthier. And, and you know, some of these things were forged from these memories of my, of my greatest escapades in food, man. And, and that was sitting in that, that, that backyard barbecue uh, atmosphere, man, with all of yeah. this lush, yeah, nutritious produce and, and Uncle Jim's incredible stories and, and the way that he embraced and, and had a beautiful smile for everyone and, and just wanted to please people. You know, he wanted to please that community. So, yeah, yeah wow. that was it. Sweet, yeah. sweet. Well, thank yes, you sir. so much for joining us on the show again, Darren. We so appreciate it. And I love talking with you and working with you. Hey, vice versa, Greg. Vice versa. Thank you for having me on the podcast. And uh, I appreciate you folks over at the Urban Farm, man, and look forward to many, many more years <laughs> right? uh, working with your organization. Absolutely. So how can our listeners get a hold of you? So the best way to get a hold of Tiger Mountain Foundation is to go to our website, www.tigermountainfoundation.org, and you will be able to find uh, contact information there and other information on what we're doing uh, from an experiential service learning perspective. And all of that information is on that website. Excellent. And you can also find show notes from today's podcast at urbanfarm.org forward slash Tiger Mountain. Hey, if you've enjoyed this podcast and are interested in listening to my first podcast series, Freshly Green from 2007, you can subscribe to support the Urban Farm podcast. With that, you will have access to Freshly Green and so much more bonus content. Visit urbanfarmpodcast.org to find out more and to pledge your support. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Urban Farm Podcast. Remember to listen for tips, advice, and resources to help you on your journey with urban farming. You can find us on the web at urbanfarm.org or send us an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org. In the words of Vincent Van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Be encouraged that with each lesson learned and skill developed, you are one step closer in the direction of your dreams.